So I've been using DaVinci Resolve for the last week on client work, on YouTube videos, on shorts, just testing it out, putting it through its repetitions and steps to really see if it could fit into my workflow for my filmmaking business that I do full time. Now, before I give you my first impressions, let me give you a little bit of context on my editing journey. I started editing video back in 2013, 2014 with Final Cut Pro. And I did Final, I used Final Cut Pro for about two years doing a lot of different client work, a lot of weddings, some nonprofit work with Final Cut. And it was good, but then I went and worked at an agency doing filmmaking at a creative agency and they had the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite. So I went ahead and started to learn Adobe Premiere Pro. And I've been using Premiere Pro for the last six years. I still use it primarily for my filmmaking business and everything that I do. And to be quite honest, there's a lot of there's a lot of haters out there who hate Premiere, who've had, they say that they've had really bad experiences. And I know that there have been iterations, there have been times in Premiere's history where, yes, it has sucked. It's been really bad. It's been hard to work with. But I can honestly say over the last two to three years, I really haven't had that many bad experiences that I can truthfully think of that would really cause me to want to leave the platform. Now, there's a lot of things that people say, cost, the different tools that DaVinci is implementing. I get that. If you're only a video editor, then cost is probably going to be a concern. But I use other applications within the Adobe Creative Suite, like Photoshop, Lightroom, After Effects. There's a lot of these different apps that I still am going to need to use. So cost is not a concern for me in particular, but maybe if you just need an editing platform, that's a big deal for you. And I get that. Okay. So if Premiere has served me well and been reliable for me over the last six years, why would I consider switching to DaVinci Resolve? Well, I think there's honestly a lot of pressure in the industry. There's a lot of people who are great at filmmaking, people who have a big presence here on YouTube who are switching to DaVinci. There seems to be this massive migration from Premiere Pro to DaVinci, and that's got me interested, to be honest. We all know that DaVinci is also the gold, the gold standard for color grading. So, I mean, that's interesting as well. So I, I think my interest is peaked. They're also implementing a lot of good AI tools for like audio and the fusion graphics and things like that. So my interest is peaked and that's why I wanted to give it a shot. So here are my first impressions of DaVinci Resolve over one week of use. I'm gonna let you know just truthfully what I think about it. So my first thing is that honestly, I really like how DaVinci is set up. I like the interface. It, it feels like since I've used both Final Cut and Premiere Pro, it feels kind of like both of those platforms, both of those softwares had a baby. That might be weird, that might be <laughs> awkward to say, but it feels like that. It feels like the professionalism of Premiere Pro with some of the nice sleek design of Final Cut, but there's some stuff within Final Cut that I feel like is kind of amateur, but that's not the case in DaVinci. I feel like it's very professional. The tools and the effects that are within the platform are very professional and very useful. Whereas there's things in Premiere that just get clunky and annoying and just seems like there's a lot of clutter. That doesn't seem to be the case in DaVinci. It's a very nice interface. Coming from Premiere, I do like that you can do so much more with the color grading, that you have so much more flexibility, so many more options. You can go really deep, really granular with your color grades, or you can go minimal, you know, if you're not really into color grading. But the beautiful thing about DaVinci is what you see in here is what you get when you render it out. And for some reason, that's just not the case in Premiere Pro. And I don't know why that hasn't changed, that hasn't updated over time, but if you've used Premiere Pro heavily, you know that when you go to render, it's gonna be a little bit less contrasted, a little less saturated, things are just gonna look a little bit different than it looks like in the editor. Now we learn how to compensate for this over time and figure this out, but it's like, why do we need to compensate for that instead of just what you see is what you get in DaVinci that's beautiful. Come on, Premiere, kick it into high gear. Give us what we want. Third is the built-in effects within DaVinci are actually very nice and very useful. There's not all this clutter that Premiere Pro has. Premiere has so many different audio and video effects. And when you look through all of them, you can't even tell, you don't understand what a majority of them do unless you're some effects expert. And so for a lot of us, 
the effects, like we, we stick to only a few effects or we create our build out our own based on maybe YouTube videos that we've watched or tutorials. But the effects in DaVinci are very nice and very useful and ones that I use in Premiere but have had to go to a third party to get them and they're already built into DaVinci and then there's not all this additional clutter and then like Final Cut, in Final Cut there's a lot of effects that are just so stupid and amateur that you don't get that in DaVinci. So it's like not all the clutter of Premiere and then not all the stupid amateur stuff of Final Cut. It's like, no, these are good, useful effects. Beautiful. Now, all that to say, DaVinci does have its quirks. And I feel like that's something that maybe there's not a lot of people talking about those things, honestly. There's a lot of people who are saying just DaVinci's awesome, it's amazing, and I do think it's really powerful. I do think that there's a lot of potential here. But it hasn't come without its quirks over the last week. To be honest, working with it on my 2019 iMac, even though this has really good graphics and this has uh, 64 gigs of RAM, I mean, I tried to max this thing out when I bought it back in 2019, it's DaVinci struggles on this machine and I'm not exactly sure all the details as to why, but when I go to play things back, it drops frames every single time. And to be quite honest, editing on my iMac, on this iMac in DaVinci is pretty much unusable. There's no way. It's like the old days of Premiere back in 2016 when I had a computer that couldn't keep up with Premiere. It's like editing in that. And so, Am I gonna use it on my iMac? No, I don't foresee myself doing it on my iMac because for whatever reason, it just doesn't play nicely. And that could be because the old Intel chip that's in this computer or just some other details, but it's it just doesn't work well. It's quirky and it, yeah, it's not efficient. But on the flip side, it actually does work well on my, what is this? 2021 MacBook Pro M1 with the M1 chip, only 16 gigs of RAM, but with the M1 chip, it doesn't drop frame. I mean, it does, it's dropped frames a few times, but not, not very frequently. And so I could only really effectively use it on this machine, but that's, I mean, whereas that may not be a huge problem for a lot of people, but for me, like I bought this iMac to be my main editing machine three years ago to sit at my desk and have the big screen and go through everything, but it just doesn't work well on here. It works well on the MacBook Pro, but then when you start to get into Fusion, which are the effects, and you start to do a little bit more heavy effects or a little bit more heavy color grading, it froze up on me and I had to go to force quit and force quit the application because it froze up on me. So. All that to say is that like, I, I think DaVinci is awesome. I think it's powerful. I think there's amazing tools here, but it's not without its own quirks. And that's what everybody has been screaming from the rooftops about Premiere is like Premiere is just unreliable. It's quirky. It's hard to work with. It's clunky, but it, that just hasn't always been the case for me. And uh, DaVinci has been quirky and clunky for me. Again, it could just be me but I just want to make that known that it hasn't come without its own quirks. The other thing that I thought was interesting just straight out of the box that annoyed me about DaVinci was on my MacBook Pro is on the trackpad, you can't, you can't pinch to zoom. Like, why is that? Why is that not immediately out of the box something that's available? Like that is a, that's something that I do every single day a lot of moments in Premiere Pro is pinch to zoom when I'm editing on my MacBook. Why is that not something that just comes straight out of the box? You can pinch to zoom. Why do I have to do, do command plus or command negative minus? That makes no sense. So there's, yeah, DaVinci's got its quirks as well. So I wouldn't say that Premiere Pro is only quirky and DaVinci is perfect. I don't think that's the case. So I think my conclusions after one week are that DaVinci is very powerful. The layout is very refreshing. It's very nice. I would wish that was the case in Premiere. The effects are amazing. Very nice. Just exactly what I'm looking for. Again, wish I had all those built into Premiere and not all the clunkiness and junk that's in there. And it's extremely powerful when it comes to color grading and rendering and delivering stuff. Your options there are so much better than you could get in Final Cut. It's very similar to Premiere, 
but even more intuitive than Premiere. So all that stuff is nice, but am I going to switch solely to DaVinci? I, at this moment, am not sold. I'm not completely sold because it's unreliable on my iMac and it does kind of get a little bit quirky in my MacBook that I'm not 100% sold on it yet. And because I'm not sold on it yet, I think I'm gonna still give it a try. I think that there's really cool things in here like AI when it comes to your audio. I think there's really cool things in there, but I'm not fully sold on it. So I think for the time being, I'm gonna keep using Premiere as my main editor for all of my work and just maybe keep dabbling a little bit in DaVinci and see if some of the things can get worked out. But for now, I use so many things within the Adobe Creative Suite, so many applications. I'm already paying for it. It's already built into my cash flow of my business. My workflow is built out in Premiere. It's still really reliable for me. So I'm gonna keep working in Premiere Pro. If you've had a similar experience or a completely different experience, drop a comment below and let me know about it. If you like this video, hey, hit that thumbs up. If you want to see more of this kind of content about editing, filmmaking, the business of it all, and you're interested in all that kind of stuff, please consider hitting subscribe and I will see you all on the next video.